I grew up similar to many of you, loving video games. But there's another passion in my life that I know many like me have devoted themselves to, metal. And the two things have always felt connected. Throughout my headbanging, button-mashing life, I've come across many other metalheads who were also gamers. But how many of us are out there? What draws us to both of these things? Where do some of my favorite musicians and developers stand on two of my favorite art forms? To figure this out, I gathered some of the best from both worlds to hear it straight from the headbangers' mouths. There's definitely like a commonality between metalheads and gamers. Whether gamers or metalheads really want to admit it or not, they have an appreciation for the arts, essentially. They just they need each other, and they and they just can't help it. They just they just it's like the drug addicts that are addicted to each other, metal and games. I think that the metal history is probably the the, the exact same for a lot of people as it is the uh, the uh, the video game history, where it's you know you're a kid and you're a little weird and you don't fit in and kind of everything people like, you're like, I don't, I don't know, this doesn't really click for me, I don't understand why. And then you kind of have that pivotal moment where you're like, oh no, this, I just don't like this stuff you guys like, I just like this stuff. I definitely remember a phase, you know, when you're really young and you don't really know what to listen to and you're like listening to the radio back then. And there was like, I remember I bought like a Billy Joel 45, I'm like, I guess this is music, whatever. And my brother like heard me listening to that or like Super Tramp or something and he's like, come here, I wanna, come here. He brought me down to his room and he put on Black Sabbath and like the first few notes of like Iron Man. Boom, boom. And I was like, is the world ending? What's <laughs> happening? And it just was like this moment where I just never forgot what it feel, felt like to have my older brother play heavy metal for the first time for me. And I was just like, oh my God. And yeah, I had all his records to like start with. And then um, started getting into, you know, Ozzy Osbourne was just making his solo albums at that time. So just getting into it right at that period. And I still have the first big album I ever bought was Diary of a Madman, Ozzy Osbourne. And it was so amazing to have him in Brutal Legend and be able to be like, will you sign this? <laughs> well, it's about fucking time. I remember uh, it was a Columbia House music catalog my parents got and they were like, all right, you know, we gotta get, we get 12 CDs for a penny, so you can pick two. And uh, I picked a Weird Al CD and uh, Judas Priest Screaming for Vengeance. Just the cover looked so cool that I was like, Robot Eagle, I gotta get that. <laughs> So I kind of grew up somewhat in the Napster era. So we would, you know, you would find playlists and stuff like that of, of different metal groups and find all these totally different bands that you never would have heard of. So it's kind of cool to now be on the receiving end of that because you've got, you know, streaming platforms like Spotify and, and iTunes music and all this stuff. So a lot of people, the benefit of the internet era is that a lot of people are finding out about you that never really would have back in the day, pre-internet. You know, pre and as far as the gaming world too, yeah, it's endless. Like you just stumble upon so many different, different games that are within the kind of games that you prefer. It seems like Napster, Spotify, and many other music sharing services echo back to the origins of metal. When fans got their music through tape trading via personal ads and metal magazines, shows, and dedicated fans spreading the word. This evangelistic approach to advocating for such consuming art also applied to the early days of gaming, when word of mouth, message boards, and chat rooms ruled the day. But in the end, most of us were brought into metal or gaming by a sibling or rabid friend. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly how it happened for me. My parents missed the friends. I was about, I think, 11 or 12. I was big into old school hip hop and, and pop music and rock music and all that, but I wasn't really very familiar with metal. And uh, one of my classmates started handing me tapes. So exactly like you said, you know, and that's how I totally fell into like first thrash with like Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, all those bands, and then quickly uh, into death metal, grindcore, you know, all the most extreme stuff that was around. And you know, I mean, when you're like 14 or whatever, you don't really have the resources, or at least most people don't, to go and, and buy everything you want to hear. So it was just kind of like whichever way you could get your hands on stuff, you know. You would yeah. get it. Growing up, my, my brother, he was a healthy two years older than I was, so we grew up in the Nintendo era. That was some of like the greatest memories of my childhood, is me and him bonding over that and playing that for hours. This game came out because Punisher. 
And I really liked the Punisher because, you know, this wasn't the dude that had uranium bolts coming out of his asshole, you know, or something like this. It was just a guy, you know, he, uh, he was mad because his wife and kids were murdered and he just became a vigilante. And I thought, fuck yeah. And I thought, this is my guy. So, uh, Killing Is My Business, the first album we had, which title track was based off of Frank Castle, The Punisher. And in the second half of one of our most popular songs, Holy Wars, dot, 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 The Punishment Do, The Punishment Do is The Punisher. I'm pretty old, so my first memories, there are a lot about like the Atari 2600 and the Adventure uh, cartridge, you know. Probably of the first 2600 games, Adventure was the most metal, because it had uh, dragons in it and it had swords, so, <laughs> um, and bats, so that was pretty metal, but it was pretty blocky. I, so there's so many different types of heavy metal. If you're like a W band from Los Angeles, the themes are like drugs and sex. If you're, the themes that I like a lot in New Wave of British Heavy Metal were often like madness, isolation, darkness, you know, diver madman, you know, loneliness. And, and then there's like power metal, which is so much more about heroism and warriors and that kind of fighting, like oh, Valhalla, you know? And I feel like that one especially, you know, both you know, all of those can have a place in games, but that one of like the warrior is like so um, present in so many video games, and I think uh, tied together and it makes such a great soundtrack too. I got a Commodore 64. My dad got me that early on. I think I was maybe six or seven years old. The way I got most of my games was like pirate copies, so I didn't <laughs> actually own many games because the Commodore 64 initially was like audio cassettes that you had to load the games from, but then later on floppy disks, you know, I, I just knew some friends in school, some guys that somehow got a hold of a lot of stuff, so, so I didn't actually unfortunately own many games, <laughs> but I was hooked from the minute I had a computer and I was probably spending way too much time playing, which is interesting because later on in my teenage years, you know, and I started uh, being more and more interested in music and then playing instruments at go to my guitar first and then later when I was playing drums to my drum kit and then play video games to end the evening. So, <laughs> so when you're saying those things are connected, I have to definitely agree. <laughs> There's always been a connection to me from video games to heavy metal. Um, for me, mostly about the themes that have a common root in fantasy. Like even if you go back before metal like Led Zeppelin, like uh, Robert Plant was always singing about Mordor. You know, it's oh, yeah. like this, this Tolkien-esque like root. but. They have that that shared um, love of steel and, and and you know lore and all that. Thematically, a lot of video games are about justice, and I feel like metal in general kind of tends to be that way as well. Like uh, you were on expert mode, uh, and I watched that, and you were wearing a shirt for three inches of blood, and immediately destroy the orcs. Yeah, destroy the orcs came to mind, and I was like, that is the most video game metal song I've ever heard. Metal music makes people salivate. It makes them it makes them happy. It gives them what they want. When they're mad, they don't go and put on a Beatles track. You know, when they want to get in their car and, and uh, drive fast, you know, they don't go put on Pet Shop Boys. You know, the, the metal that you know, feeds the, that, that fire, that unquenchable thirst. And when you're playing a video game, I think if you're not capturing the moment musically with the intensity of the game, you know, people are going to drift off to sleep. You need something that's gonna keep them in our act. And a really good riff will keep people excited. Hey, you know what, let's put some narrative in here. Okay, let's have some GIs. Well, let's have them talk like real GIs. Well, real GIs, when they're in the trenches, they don't go, excuse me, sir, can you please pass me another round of ammo? They say, give me that fucking mad now! <laughs> you know, and it takes on realism and that intensity, you know, kind of like that. You don't see them sitting around listening to back. There's music that just kind of goes with that adrenaline as the heat starts to ratchet up and the adrenaline starts to, to flow. For me, I don't want to dummy it down and start listening to, you know, some evening music. Man, I want it to get loud and fast and rude and I want the beat to pick up. I want the solos to be wailing, strapping on the exoskeleton suit and, you know, it's kind of the same feeling when you put a guitar on and you walk out in front of an audience. And also, the attitudes of the fans, that, that kind of a feeling of undergroundness of, you know, like, you know, in my high school, it was like, 
the, the metal guys would get together and like, <laughs> they were like <laughs> lurking in the corners and talk about like the new albums and stuff like that. And video games were like that. It's not so much, you know, nowadays that all kids are playing Fortnite and stuff. It doesn't feel exactly the same way, but that kind of a little bit outsider feeling of being a heavy metal fan and a video game fan when I was growing up kind of had a very similar uh, yeah, tone to them. Metal is definitely more of an escape than a lot of music. You know, pop music will be like talking about things that, you know, people generally do. You know, uh, but with metal, the things we're talking about are generally not what people do at all. It's <laughs> it's 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 really out there. And then you know the same kind of the same kind of thing in video games. Those themes, definitely the the epic battles and, and the fantastic worlds and the invented creatures that can be really you know kind of like what we would imagine in our wildest dreams and stuff. I mean, I think that's something that you know it's always going to be present in metal. I mean, even I would say it probably started with literature. You know, which for me, like I used to read a lot of science fiction as a kid and also some more horror or fantastic stuff. Lovecraft, you know, Lovecraft was huge for me, Edgar Allan Poe. Before there was metal and before there were video games, that's kind of where that all started. And I think it's something that people have always, you know, at least a lot of people have always been really passionate about it. That, that's always going to be something that lends itself really well to the inherent darkness and, and kind of, you know, aggression that comes with metal. Diablo. Uh, Doom, anything like that. At some point, you're watching it and you go, "Okay, yeah, there's this is an album cover." You clearly looked at these album covers growing up. You had a nice LP, and you're like, "One day I will be in there." And then you, that was the way you kind of figured out. You're like, "Oh well, hey, if I just..." get into a 3D rendering, I can just get in there, that's awesome. It's not for everybody this kind of stuff, but I think you have to have a kind of mindset where you really want to dig deep into something like that, where you can really get excited about something that has a certain depth to it. And again, that goes for both albums, music, bands, whatever, and, and video games. I think if you look at the nature of somebody who will write code for hours and hours and hours, just so they, they can build a game, that's a, a mindset and a beast all of its own because the thought process, the genius that goes behind keeping track of all that code. I mean, you know, how do you make the game sticky? How, how do you compete with Call of Duty and Doom, for Christ's sakes, you know? I mean, they both have this outsider status and they both have themes that I think um, are fun to explore, especially at a certain age. You're like, you're really exploring your darkness. I think you're exploring your shadow. You know, I think um, fantasy has that. Maybe it's exploring fears or exploring exciting, weird, extreme things, you know? Um, they're really appealing when you're, you know, figuring out your own identity and, and um, those things appeal at that age. You know, my first exposure to heavy metal was Black Sabbath and Ozzy Osbourne, and they're, they're not about, like, power and aggression. They're about madness, often, and, like, uh, paranoia and, and fear. And I think and actually a lot of heavy metal for me, the stuff that I like the most is actually very vulnerable. It's a very vulnerable type of expression of like you're really, you're opening yourself out there and, and you're not saying I'm the strongest person around. You're saying like, I think I'm being pulled down to hell. <laughs> like, yeah. you know? And that's, that's one of the things I really like about heavy metal for sure. Still to this day, even though metal, metal is a pretty popular genre, it's still at the end of the day when you compare it to the norm, a, a niche genre for sure. Um, so you still have this communal aspect within the metal community too. And it's like that with the gaming world too. And it's, and it's cool because yes, there is a competitive edge to it, but there's also like a very good sense of community. So you feel like you have to, you know, create that bond with, with other players. The sense of community that gaming and metal both retain is one of the most interesting aspects of both of these beloved art forms not only because they can inspire such a positive emotional bond, but also because they're often drawn closer due to the intense negative reactions from those whose tastes lie outside the worlds of metal and gaming. Video games and heavy metal both have this thing where there's a lot of things that are obviously alienating about them. Like you can see, like you're wearing this shirt, right? There's, you know there's gonna be people walking down the street that aren't gonna like it. They're immediately gonna be turned off by it. And that's part of the like, yeah, but the people who like it, Especially when you're at that age in high school where you're so much, you're, a lot of your pressure is to like, to figure out what people like and try and make people like you, you know, and all that. And then you're like, no, I like this thing and I don't care if you, anyone else likes it. But it is nice to have like some friends that like it too and we can get together and talk about it, whether it's video games or whether it's a heavy metal. I think to some degree, whether directly or indirectly, I think metal music has influenced the scoring of a lot of video games, even the older ones too. Like when you go back and listen to 
old Mega Man, like old Sonic the Hedgehog, and even some of the stuff like on the old Mario games. Everything's kind of in this minor scale, so it kind of has, has this like metal edge to it, like aggressive sort of edge. And even in, in some, you know, like with the old, old video games, like that 8-bit, they were 8-bit sounds, but it still had this like aggressive Sonic feel to it. Um, and especially now, so nowadays, like the modern games, like the, the latest release of Doom, Wolfenstein, they've just taken that to a new level because now they can go full out aggressive with it. And this is where metal and video games finally tied the knot. More and more games are committing to hard rock and heavy metal scores or finding the means to combine symphonic, electronic, and metallic elements to create something new. It's worth commending Mick Gordon's massive success in recent Bethesda games like Doom and Wolfenstein 2. But what about the other side of this coin? Metal bands have begun boldly brandishing their video game influences, often going as far as recreating sounds from games, writing lyrics inspired by games, or even including sections of some of the scores of their favorite games within their own music. It feels right to see metalheads wave their nerd flags high and these two subcultures finally embracing their love for one another. Oh, I think that's, that's pretty present. I mean, now there's even a number of bands that are bands like Dragon Force and the like, you know, they, they have a very uh, flair and a vibe to them that, that's similar to the epic, you know, tunes and the buildup that you can find in video games. So I think nowadays, obviously, the memes are very different. So a lot of games, like, for example, I'm a huge Dark Souls fan. That's kind of what I've been playing the past five years or whatever. Now it's still what I put on when I write dialogue for games. I have this I have a playlist that I'm just blasting heavy metal because I know the song so well that I don't. It's not distracting or anything, so it's actually good for doing creative stuff. You can sometimes hear, do even directly hear that influence where you'll be like, "Why does this riff sound familiar?" And then you're like, "Oh wait, this is kind of like you know this fight with Dr. Wily or or, or, or whatever." You had these two really similar kind of scenes, two really similar kind of people drawn to them, and you do definitely get that oh, well, you grew up listening to the same stuff and watching and playing the same stuff as I do, and now we've all kind of turned into really similar people as a result. For one thing, I'm, I've been listening to heavy metal while I've written every single game. So, like, Grim Fandango is all, like, Spanish and, and film noir jazz music, but I was listening to Motorhead the entire time I was writing that. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, I don't think it comes out. It's just, it just, it just the way it was. I hope there's a little bit of metal and everything. Like Megadeth started having songs and soundtracks as early as 2001, so that's been now like almost 20 years probably where that kind of stuff has been happening. Every action game wants to have a heavy song. I don't think any company really targeted this demographic. I think it was for a, a creative and inspiration based thing that just the people who like to make games and the people who like heavy metal to have a lot of shared inspiration. A lot of times you'd see a, a video game and would use heavy metal in their trailer. You know, because they had a lot of these images of knights or demons and that kind of stuff, and they, it would seem so right to put a heavy metal song in the trailer. But then you play the game, and it'd be a very symphonic, you know, more John Williams type thing going on. And you're like, why don't they just keep that music for the for the game? And that's a lot of the inspiration for Brutal Legend. It was like, just, just we, these things want to be together. Why hasn't a, more of this been done? I'm sure that some of those influences creep in there because video games have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember them. I did play drums on an album where all the lyrics were based on Dark Souls, <laughs> but that wasn't really my doing. I, I found that out later. They have these very this very anthemic and epic imagery within the game, which is very similar to heavy metal music. Like they kind of, for some reason, those two things just go hand in hand. Like it's not, like if you think of a, you know, God of War, the soundtrack to that's not gonna be like the B-52s or something. <laughs> it's gonna be something very aggressive and anthemic and, and um, you know, very, very motivating and very moving, and the, both of those worlds mesh pretty seamlessly. And one of the best things about doing anything creative is when you really connect with people, and I felt like we really connected with the people who, um, they could tell we were being sincere when we made that game. It wasn't just a treatment of heavy metal. It was like this, you know, this team, you know, we loved it. And, um, and, and all, what you get back from fans like that and players is that, I think the heavy metal fan base is actually one of the, like, the nicest, like, biggest hearted fan bases out there. And if you go to like a big, you know, you, you might be, when you're younger, scared to go to like a big metal festival, you're gonna get, it's really rough and stuff like that. And there may be an element there, but there, you also see like 
dads with their kids on their shoulder. Just this really like warm-hearted uh, community, and I think metal's always been that way. It's one thing I like about it. Considering these two art forms were born into the world in the late 70s, found their footing in the 80s, and really grew up together, it's not hard to understand why they would have so much in common. They share generations of people that were brought up with new and exciting approaches to expression and entertainment, and fans were captivated. Interviewing these incredible people with their own stories so similar to my own has only thrown gas on the fervent flames of my love for metal and video games. I expect to see a whole lot more from both of them in the future. You can be sure we'll be here for all of your video game needs, so stick with IGN.